Hello dear students, today's topic is Nomenclature of Heterocyclic Compounds. The heterocycles are the cyclic compounds which contain one or more heteroatom. The heteroatom simply means the atom other than carbon. So any cycle which consists of atom other than carbon is called as heterocycle. For example, if we look at this six member ring, it consists of carbons only. So this is the example of a homocycle. While if we look at this ring, here is the presence of one nitrogen and five carbon atoms in a ring. So this ring represent a heterocyclic ring. So benzene is considered as a homocycle while this ring which is called as pyridine represent the heterocycle. Now in the heterocyclic compounds, the mostly encountered heteroatoms are oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen and phosphorus. Now there are some rules of nomenclature which if we follow then it is very easy to give the IUPC name to any heterocyclic compound. The rule number one is that the name of monocyclic compound is derived by a prefix indicating nature of heteroatom. Dear student, please keep this point in mind that for naming a heterocycle, we have to use a combination of prefixes and suffixes. Now, in the prefixes, we will use prefixes for the heteroatom. For example, for oxygen, we will use oxa. For sulfur, we will use thia. For nitrogen, it is aja. For phosphorus, it is phosphor. And for silicon, it is sila. For example, if we look at this ring, here is the presence of oxygen. So for oxygen, we will use the prefix ox. So here the name oxetan is given, which is a combination of prefix ox and a suffix etan. So for oxygen, we will use the prefix oxa. Then for this ring, here is the presence of sulfur. So for this, we will use the prefix thia. The name thai 8 will show you that the prefix used is thia here. For example, if a ring consists of a nitrogen, we will use the prefix ajha. For example, this ring is called as ajapin ring. So ajapin is also a combination of prefix ajha and the suffix apin. The rule number two is that when the same heteroatom is present for two or more times, then we will use the prefixes like di, tri, tetra or penta etc. For example, if we look at this ring, here is the presence of two nitrogens. So for two, we will use the prefix di followed by the prefix aja for nitrogen. So it will become di aja in this case. This ring is given the name di aj ol. So dear students, you can view here that this di aj stands for two nitrogens. Next, if we look at this ring, here is the presence of two oxygens. So it is called as dioxa here. When uh, heteroatoms are the different one, the order of priority is oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen and phosphorus. That means among this heteroatom, oxygen have the highest priority order. So when two different heteroatoms are present, then we will use the prefixes like ox aja if oxygen and the nitrogen are present. Thai aja if sulfur and nitrogen are present. Ox thaya if oxygen and sulfur are present. Ox di aja if one oxygen and two nitrogens are 
present. So in all the cases, the priority goes to oxygen over here, which is followed by sulfur, nitrogen and phosphorus. If we look at this example, here is the presence of two heteroatoms, oxygen and nitrogen. So dear student, we will use the prefix ox ajha here. The name ox ajhol will show you that the prefix uses ox ajha. Next, if we look at this ring, here is the presence of two heteroatoms, a sulfur and a nitrogen. So sulfur has the priority over nitrogen. That's why the prefix used here is thai ajha. The name of this ring is thiazolidine. So this thai ajha represents the prefix used for these heteroatoms according to their priority order. Now next rule is that the size of the monocyclic ring from 3 member to 10 member is indicated by a stem with suffix as given in the following table. So dear students as I told you that in naming the heterocycles we have to use a combination of prefix and a suffix. So for the heteroatoms we will use the prefixes and for the size of the ring we will use the suffixes. So let's look at the size of the rings. So if three members are there in a ring then we will use the stem IR over here which is taken from tri. So if we reverse this then it will become IR. So if a nitrogen containing ring is completely unsaturated we will use the suffix irene. Here you can see here that it is a three member ring and is completely unsaturated with a nitrogen. So we will use the suffix irene over here. With the prefix ajha this ring will become ajirene. So the complete IUPC name of this three membered nitrogen containing unsaturated ring is ajirene. Likewise if a nitrogen containing three member ring is saturated we will use the suffix iridine. So in this case the name of this ring will become ajiridine. Next if a three member ring consists of oxygen that means if a three member ring does not consist of nitrogen then we will use the suffix irene over here. So here is the presence of oxygen so it will become ox irene. Next if a three member ring is completely saturated then we will use the suffix iran. So in this case with oxygen it will become oxyran. Next move on to the ring which consists of four groups or four atoms in the ring. For four the stem uses et which is taken from tetra. From tetra we will use the stem et over here. So when a ring is nitrogen containing and is completely unsaturated we will use the suffix et e t e which is followed by the prefix for the heteroatom. So for nitrogen the prefix is ajha and for a four member ring the suffix is et so it will become ajhait. Likewise for a completely saturated nitrogen containing four member ring the name will be ajhetidine. If the nitrogens are not present then for such rings we will use the suffix like et if the ring is completely unsaturated like this and we will use the suffix etan if it is completely saturated. So in this case for this ring sulfur containing it is the saturated unsaturated ring so it will become thai et over here. Now let's look at this ring here is the presence of oxygen with a four member ring and it is completely saturated. So the name of this ring will be ox 
e tan. Next, if there are five members in the ring, we will use the stem all over here. If the ring is nitrogen containing and it is completely unsaturated, we will use the suffix all. For example, this ring is five member ring containing nitrogen and it is completely unsaturated. So the name of this ring is aj all. For nitrogen, the prefix used is ajha. And for five member ring, we will use the suffix all. So it will become ajol. This ajol ring is commonly called as pyrrol. Likewise, if the five member ring is completely saturated, we will use the suffix only dean. So this ring now will become azolidin because there is a presence of nitrogen. The azolidin ring is commonly called as pyrrolidin. If the rings are non-nitrogen, then we will use the suffix all over here, O-L-E. In this case, it will become oxol because oxygen is here. This ring is commonly called as furan ring. Now this ring is completely saturated and it does not consist of any nitrogen. So here we will use the suffix olan. So this ring will become thiolan because sulfur is there. So we will use the prefix thia followed by the suffix olan. So it will become thiolan and this ring is commonly called as tetrahydrothiophene. Next, if the ring is six-membered, we will use this stem IN. For nitrogen containing six-member ring, we will use the suffix INE, that is in. So in this case, for six-membered nitrogen containing unsaturated ring, the name is Agene, which is commonly called as pyridine. If it is completely saturated, we will use the prefix perhydro followed by name of the unsaturated ring that it will become perhydroene and in this case, this ring will become perhydroene which is commonly referred as piperidine. Now, if the ring is non-nitrogen and it is saturate, unsaturated, we will use the suffix in that is i n over here for example in this ring here is presence of sulfur and it is a six member ring so we will call it thi in next if we look at this ring this ring is also a six member and does not consist of nitrogen and it is completely saturated for completely saturated non nitrogen ring we will use the suffix n so this ring will become ox n which is called as tetrahydropyran. Next move on to the ring which consists of seven members in the cycle. For seven, we will use the word hepta and from hepta this ape is taken as the stem EP. If the ring is nitrogen containing and it is completely unsaturated, here we will use the suffix apine. So in this case, this ring is named as ajapine. Likewise, if it is completely saturated, we will call it or suffix it as epan. So in this case, this nitrogen containing ring is called as ajapan. If the ring does not consist of any nitrogen, and if it is completely unsaturated, we will use the same suffix like epin. And if it is completely saturated, we will use the suffix epan. So if it is a non-nitrogen ring and it is seven membered, we will call it oxapin because we have to use the prefix oxa for the oxygen. Likewise, the sulfur containing Saturated ring is called as thi epan. Next, move on to the rings containing the eight members. For eight, we will use the stem os, which is taken from octa. From octa, we will take os as the stem. So, if the ring is nitrogen containing and it is completely unsaturated like this, we will use the suffix osin over here. 
तो दिस रिंग इज कॉल्ड एज अजोसिन फॉर कंप्लीटली सैचुरेटेड वी विल यूज द सफिक्स ओ कैन एंड दिस रिंग इज कॉल्ड एज अजो कैन लाइक वाइज इफ द रिंग इज नॉन नाइट्रोजन एंड इट इज अनसेचुरेटेड वन वी विल यूज ओ सीन एज अ सफिक्स सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज थाइसिन एंड इफ the ring is completely saturated and does not consist of any nitrogen then it is called as ocan so this ring is called as ox ocan next move on to the ring containing nine members in the ring for nine we will use the stem on which is taken from nona from nona we will use this on as the stem for this rings for the nitrogen containing unsaturated ring we will use the suffix onin so this ring is called as ajonin if the ring is non nitrogen containing and it is completely saturated we will use the suffix onen so in this case this ring is called as ox onen next move on to the ring which consists of the 10 members in the ring for 10 we will use the stem s which is taken from deca so if the ring is nitrogen containing and it is completely unsaturated we will use the suffix acin so for this ring the name is aj acin and if the ring is completely saturated and if does not consist of any nitrogen then it is suffixed as e can so in this case it is called as thai e can next move on to the rule number 3 for nomenclature we have to identify whether the ring is completely saturated or partially saturated if it is completely saturated then we will use the suffix as per the table as we have already discussed if the ring is partially saturated then we will use the prefixes like dihydro or dihydro by using the symbol h for the position or the number which is hydrogenated or saturated for example in this six member ring the position position number 2 and position number 6 are the saturated so we will write down their position as 2h comma 6h followed by the iubac name of this six member ring for this ring the numbering start with the sulfur which has the priority over nitrogen so this is number 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so this ring is called as 1 5 2 2 2 2 2 2 if we look at this seven member ring the saturation in the form of nascent hydrogen is present at position number 1 so this is called as 1h 1 4 डाय अझा ए पी नाउ रूल नंबर फोर इज दैट वेन एवर वी एनकाउंटर विथ अ मोनोसाइक्लिक रिंग द नंबरिंग ऑलवेज स्टार्ट विद द हेट्रो एटम एंड द रिंग इज नंबर इन सच अ वे टू गिव द लोवेस्ट नंबर टू द सब्सिट्यूएंट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल for this five member ring the numbering start with the nitrogen because this is the only hetero atom which is present over here so this is given number 1 2 3 4 and 5 we number this ring in the anti clockwise direction because the substituent occurs first at position number 2 and then at position number 4 so the name of this ring is 4 chloro 2 methyl 1 h pyrrol here pyrrol is the common name otherwise we can use the word azol also if we look at this five member ring the numbering start with oxygen with the hetero atom so the it is 1 2 3 4 and 5 now dear student in this case also we that did the numbering in the anti clockwise direction because the methyl substituent has occurred first at position number 3 over here so the name of this ring is 3 methyl 4 nitro furan the next rule is that if a cycle consists of two or more heteroatoms the numbering always start 
with the atom of the highest priority and then the rest of the ring is numbered in such a way to give the lowest possible number to the other heteroatoms or the substituent groups. For example, in this case, in this five member ring, there are two heteroatoms, oxygen and nitrogen. So oxygen has the priority over the nitrogen. So oxygen is given number one and nitrogen is given number two over here. So the name of this ring is 1 comma 2 oxazole which is commonly called as isoxazole. If we look at this ring in here two heteroatoms are sulfur and nitrogen. Sulfur has priority over the nitrogen. So the numbering is start with sulfur. So this is number 1, this will be number 2 and this will be number 3. So this ring is called as 1 comma 3 thiazolidine. So Dear students, that is all about the nomenclature of heterocyclic ring. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.